The three functions that I want to show you here are the left, find, and search. Well, the find and search functions do pretty much the same thing, but I'll show you both anyways. First of all, the left function, it'll look in any cell, in the leftmost part of the cell, and count up and return the exact number of characters that you define. For example, let me go ahead and insert that function here by hitting the equals key on the keyboard and typing in the first couple of letters for left. There it is. There's the description. It says it'll return the specified number of characters from the start of a text string. What's going to be the start? Well, the cell that I select, and it's going to be the left-hand side. Let me go ahead and hit the tab key to pop open that function to answer the first argument there in bold, which is text. What is the text? Well, it's going to be within that cell, so let me go ahead and select it. Hit comma so I can go ahead and answer the second argument in bold here, which is going to be the number of characters. So in other words, when it looks in the cell starting the left-hand side, if I type in 3, what are the first three characters? M-A-X, hit enter, there we go, max. Let me go ahead and copy that uh, function there to the other cells down below for the rest of the names. And I can do that by hovering over the lower right-hand corner till I get the black cross. I can either click or drag, or a shortcut to that, since I'm going to be copying in this column here, is just to go ahead and double-click on that black cross really fast, and boom, there you go. Now this looks great if your first name only has three characters in it, like Max and Bob. doesn't work for all the rest, does it? Well, let me show you the other two functions that pretty much do the same thing, search and find, and then after we're going to combine them because the purpose of this training video, not only to show you the functions, but to show you how you can combine functions, in other words, nesting functions, putting one function into another, so we can get the results that we want. And the results that I want is to be able to not just get the first couple of letters here, because I don't get the first full name, but to nest those functions so I can get the best of both functions. Let me show you the second function here. Let's do the search. The search function, what that does is it looks in a cell, and it counts up the characters until it hits a roadblock. And that roadblock can be any delimiter, like a semicolon, a colon, or in this case, a space. So I'm going to go ahead and have a count in the cell starting from left-hand side until it hits that delimiter or that roadblock space and then stop counting. So you can see where I'm going at with this. In other words, instead of saying it's just going to be three characters, we want it to go up until it hits the space so it can include all the characters of these first names here but it doesn't return the actual characters, it just does the counting. For example, let me go ahead and insert that search function, hitting the equals key on the keyboard, typing in the first couple of letters, there it is, search. It returns the number of characters at which a specific character text string is first found. So, where's it going to first find it? Well, for Max, right here after the X, and then for Bob after the B. Let me go ahead and hit the tab key to pop open the function, answer the first argument in bold, find text. What do I want to find when I'm searching? I want to find that delimiter. So I'm going to go ahead and do open quotes, space, close quotes. The delimiter is going to be the space. Hit comma to answer the next argument. Within what text or what cell? Let me go ahead and select the cell. And I could end it right here and just hit enter and be done. But if you're really curious what this last one is, start number, if I just leave it alone and just hit enter, by default it's going to be 1. What that means is that when it starts counting up to find that delimiter, that space, it's going to start with 1. Well, that makes sense because if it starts over here to the left-hand side, now this isn't the left function, but it's got a start. The starting point's left-hand side. It's going to count 1, B, 2, O, B is going to be 3. So why would I want to mess with that? Why would I want to type in, let's say, let's do comma 6? Well, if I type in 6 and it looks at that and it says, okay, there's 1, B, 2, O, 3, B, 4. Once it hits that delimiter and it wants to keep going over till 6, you're going to get raspberries. It's, the function isn't going to work. There's a purpose for it, but not in this training video. So by default, I want it to start on 1, the first letter, and then once it hits that wall, the uh, delimiter, then stop. Let me go ahead and hit Enter, and it returns 4. It includes the space or the delimiter as well. So for max, how many do we have? MAX3 plus the space is 4. Now that's the search function. Let me go ahead and delete that, and let's do equals FIN to do find. And there it is, returns the starting position of one text string within another text string. In other words, let me go ahead and hit the tab key, and it says, what text are we looking for? Again, open quotes, space, close quotes, and it's looking for the delimiter, the character, the space. Let me hit comma, go to the second argument, within what text or what cell. Let me go ahead and select the cell. And you see it wants to start with a number. If I don't mess with it, it's going to start with number 1, which is fine. It'll start the left-hand side, and you'll count 1, 2, 3, until it hits the space, and not go beyond it. That's why I don't want to mess with that. Go ahead and hit Enter, and returns the same thing. Pretty cool. So when it comes to this, you may pick or choose which one you like the most, search or find. In any case, let me go ahead and select it, hover over the lower right-hand corner, and double-click really fast, and 
copy that function and paste it down below. So we've got four characters here. Let's look at the six. There's Danny, D-A-N-N-Y. There's five plus a space is six. Now when you look at the left function, it gets it right in that it actually brings in the characters, right? The search function gets it right because it actually counts up how many characters. Now if we can just nest them or put one inside another to count up the number of characters, then the one for Homer will count up to six and actually include, well, the space, but include the other five characters so we're not cut off at HOM. To do that, let me go ahead and click in this cell here, and let's insert one function into another, again called nesting. Go ahead and hit the equals key on the keyboard, and the first function is going to be left. Just start typing it. Hit the tab key once it's selected to pop open the function, and it says, OK, what text are we looking for? Well, it's going to be found in this cell, so let me go ahead and select it. Hit comma, and it says, OK, the number of characters. Well, we can go ahead and try to guess it and type it in, but if we already have a function here that returns the exact number of characters, Let's go ahead and nest that function right into here. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and type in FI, well, for find. Once it's selected, hit the tab key, it pops open. So you've got to be really organized what you're looking at when you're inserting one function into another. Okay, so it says, okay, what are we finding? Well, we're going to find, let me do open quote, space, close quotes. We want to find that uh, delimiter, that space. Hit comma to answer the next bold argument within what cell, what text, it's going to be this cell, so I select it again, and then go ahead and close the parentheses, and so we close that one, and then close the parentheses again, because for every parentheses that we start with, we have to close it, so we have the find function that has to have its own set of parentheses, then we have the left function that has to have its own set of parentheses, so we have the nested function find within the left function. The left function takes precedence over the find in that when it returns those characters, it's going to return them as actual letters, pulling it out there. Then the find is just simply saying, okay, what are the number of characters? Go ahead and hit enter, and there's max. Now let's go ahead and test it because, well, we've already seen it here. Let me go ahead and hover over it, double click, boom, it copies. And it brings everybody over because it counted up all those characters. Now remember that we have not only the number of characters for the first name, but we've got an added space. So if I want to go ahead and have these as values, not the function, because when you select the cell, there's the function. I want the values. Remember how in previous training videos we selected it? Control C to copy, and then we went ahead and pasted right over it, right click, and then selected. The paste is just values. When I paste it, and I hit the escape key, double click in the cell, I've got the first three characters, max, and then an extra space. If I don't want that space, let me hit the escape key. I'm going to hit undo a couple of times so I can go back. Well, let me go forward one, hit the escape key, so I can actually go back to where I had the function within the cells. What I can do is I can go ahead and subtract one of those characters, being the space character. So go ahead and double click to bring up the function here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the outside. Let me get that uh, cursor flashing to the outside of that uh, first set of parentheses and hit negative one or minus one, hit enter, and then go ahead and Let's double click in the lower right hand corner really fast. Copy that so it updates all the other cells. So it's taking that extra character and subtracting it out of the equation. So when I go ahead and control C to copy, right click, and go down to paste values, hit the escape key, double click within the cell. The cursor's flashing right up next to that uh, character, meaning that there's not a space in there at all. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.